Are you tired of spending all your time in Premiere? Looking to speed up your editing workflow? Do you want to delete the program so you never have to look at a render screen again? Then sell all your belongings and begin a life of solitude in the mountains? Well, don't do that. Today I'm going to show you 15 things that I've learned over the years in Premiere Pro that I wish I learned as a beginner so you can pass that amateur stage and become a Premiere Pro. I'm sorry. Whenever I first started recording on a dual track system, I would always try to sync the clips with just a clap, you know? Uh, you'd use the clapper uh, while recording and then sync on that clap point. It's simple enough, but there's a lot easier way to do it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your clips and drag them over into your timeline. So right now they're out of sync and I want to sync them up. So I'm gonna highlight them both, right click, and go to synchronize. Now the synchronize clips tab is gonna pop open and you're gonna to wanna to select audio right here. Press okay, and those audio clips are going to process through Premiere and sync together without you having to do any synchronization at all. And whenever you play it, it will play correctly. And for this to work, you gotta make sure that your camera is recording audio on board. So uh, just make sure that your onboard mic is on while recording so it can sync those clips together using the scratch track. You can delete the scratch track later. Also, if you want to organize all your clips after you've synced them to a timeline, you can highlight that clip right there, right click, and then go to merge clips and press OK. Now those clips are going to be an entity together. And if you want to create a new bin full of sync clips, now you can drag that clip in into there. And now whenever you need that clip with both the audio and video synced together, you can drag that back out and it's going to be synced right there. So number two, we're gonna dive into organizing your bins. So if you're like me, you probably have a messy project window. Uh, it happens, you know, I would just import all my clips and all of my audio clips and it would just be a complete mess, like a hundred clip list that I have to search through. The organizing in bins makes your life a lot easier while you're in your edit. But instead of going through and creating bins for all your assets, you can actually drag folders into Premiere. So say I have my footage folder here. I have after ingestion, I took all the stuff off my SD card and it's ready to go. Instead of you know opening this up and selecting all the clips individually and dragging them over, you can actually just select the entire folder, drag it in and Premiere is automatically gonna create a bin for you right there with the footage in it. You can also do this for the audio, drag that in and automatically you're gonna have an audio bin. And to even go in further into organization, this is something that I like to do. I like to color code my video clips and audio clips, depending on which camera it was recorded on. Uh, just basically kind of putting everything into a neat little category. So whenever you drag stuff into your timeline, it's a little bit more organized. So I'm gonna go in and make these clips a different color, uh, just to make sure that I tell myself this is my B-roll. So go into label, I'm gonna make these rows. So whenever I drag them in, I'm gonna see a rose color. And with my audio, um, you know, it's always usually green, but for this example, I'm gonna turn it to brown. So now we got brown clips, drag those in, and now we have organization on our timeline. And this helps a lot if you have a bunch of cameras that you shot on, so like three or four, uh, you can have color coding for very specific cameras. So whenever you have a large scale timeline, everything's kind of organized and you can tell which spaces are which due to the color that you're using. So number three is organizing your workspace, which is really important to speeding up your workflow. Um, as you can see here, this is my workflow right here. Um, it's kind of like a modified edit page. Uh, I have my source here, so whenever I am I ingested footage and I want to test it out. Here it pops up. Um, but say let's, we are, we've already dra dragged stuff into the timeline. So we've got our clip here. Um, on the right, I'll have my Lumetri color tabs, which I have brought over from window uh, Lumetri color. You can just drag it over and it pops up right here. I have essential graphics and effects. So whenever I'm going through my edit in the timeline, if I need an effect, it's just up right here. Um, say I need a graphic pops in right here. Say that you create your new workspace, whatever works easiest for you. Um, I like to work pretty minimally, so I delete everything that I don't use, like the info tabs, the library tabs, um, things that I just don't normally use because I'd like to just have a very streamlined window. Go to window to save your new workspace by going to workspace, 
uh, and then save as a new workspace and then create a new workspace by entering a new name and it's going to pop up right there at the top so whenever you want to close out a premiere and open it back up that workspace is going to pop up right back there and be ready to go bonus tip uh no one told me this for like two years whenever i started premiere but if you want to make your program window full screen all you have to do is just press the tilde key and it goes full screen no one told me that and it's one of the simplest things in Premiere. Now, number four is using your option key. So if you're tired of just using Command C, Command V to duplicate clips, um, I'll show you a really easy way to do it right in your timeline. So if you go here, we got our clip right in the timeline. All I gotta do is just hold option, select this clip, and then drag it over. Now we have two copies of the same clip. Very helpful when it comes to duplicating a lot of clips down your timeline. I use it all the time. Another option selection that you can do is actually using the option key to select individual layers of your timeline. So usually with a clip that has audio and video synced, like you have onboard camera audio, um, it won't let you select the audio by itself. So what you're gonna do is hold down the option key and you'll be able to select individual layers of merged clips. So say you have all these clips down the row, uh, you don't need the audio, you can just hold the option, select all of the audio and delete it. Instead of, I used to actually click the lock button on this and then it would just, you know, take three or four more clicks than I would have to do without using the option tab to delete the audio layer. So quick tip. So number five is all about cutting clips. Now, I hate the razor tool. It's clunky, it's not responsive, and you have to press another button to get to that button. And I hated using it. See, with the razor tool, you have to press C, and sometimes you have to either line it up directly onto your playhead, or it, I, I just don't like it. If you press Command or Control K, depending on PC or Mac, it just splits right there at the playhead. It's easy enough, and I use this shortcut more than anything on Premiere. Honestly, Command K is my best friend. Um, it's just so simple, especially if you're, you know, coming through an edit, just pause Command K and get that clip split right there. So yeah, try it out. You might like it. So number six is learning about something called the New Item tab. Now this is something no one ever told me existed while I was learning Premiere. Down here in the right corner of your project window, if you select it, there's going to be all these options to create new assets directly in Premiere. So you have adjustment layers, bars and tone, black video, um, all the things you could possibly need that isn't, you know, direct assets. Uh, so for example, say I need an adjustment layer. And if you've never used an adjustment layer before, it's basically like a null object in After Effects. So if I have a bunch of layers on my timeline right here, and I want to color grade them, I just drag the adjustment layer over top, and instead of having to go into both, I can actually just color grade this adjustment layer, and it will affect both layers of my video. There's also black video that you can use, which is great for graphics, you know, black background for. I actually used to go to Google and download just a black solid, because I had no idea that the new item tab was in Premiere, which is ridiculous and wasted a bunch of time, now that black video is going to add a little buffer layer between your text layer and your video layer. There's also the color map button, which you can use, which is kind of like black video. Select that and create a new solid with any color that you would like. So, you know, create a new color map, drag it in, and bam, you have a solid with a color of your choice. And finally, we got bars and tone, which is always a great thing if you need to bleep something out. You've seen it everywhere. I actually downloaded this exact thing from YouTube because I had no idea that it was just in Premiere. And if you want to use it to bleep out stuff, be my guest. All right, so number seven is a little B-roll trick that I've learned. If you got a clip playing in your source window right here, and you've got a clip right down here in your timeline with audio that you need to use, um, whenever you normally drag in a clip from there, it'll bring in your audio timeline, and you have to just you know keep it right there, and then you know uh, select this audio layer by itself and delete it. It's just, if you don't need the audio layer, it's a pain to delete it if it comes onto your timelines. So right below here, uh, there's this little film strip and audio waveform. Uh, you can actually just drag just the video and bring it on top of your timeline. Or if you just need to extract the audio from the clip, you can drag that right there. And even if you need to look at the waveform of your clip without the audio, you can click that audio little tab and your audio will pop up. And that marks halfway. Get out! <laughs> 
I got that coffee. So number eight is using a trick to incorporate After Effects. And I know some of you don't like using After Effects, but sometimes it's a necessity because you need a nice sweep for a title or you need motion blur for graphics. Trust me, sometimes you just need it. So looking here in Premiere, if I have this clip right here that I would like to place a title graphic over with some After Effects worthy stuff, instead of going to After Effects and creating the graphic then exporting it then dragging it back into Premiere, I can actually right click this clip and go to replace with After Effects composition. Now Premiere is automatically going to send that clip to After Effects and then it's going to open up that clip directly here in After Effects uh, with the exact timeline that it was on uh, from just that one clip. And from here we can create a new title. Alright so now we have this little ramp in title sequence and if you want to find out how to do this make sure you check out Todd's After Effects videos which you can check right here in the description. Right there. Bam. So now that we've created the title sequence in After Effects, all you have to do is just Command S this and save it, and it's gonna pop up actually right here in Premiere automatically after you saved it. And say that you wanna make a change to the title, uh, instead of having to go back into After Effects and re-export it by you know changing the title then putting it back in the render queue, you can actually just go back to After Effects and change it just, you know, here, I wanna add an exclamation point. Um, just Command S that and save it, and it's gonna pop up directly in Premiere. Anytime you save in After Effects, all that information is gonna transfer back over to Premiere. So number nine is about audio, and I'm not gonna lie, I learned this trick like a year ago, and I'm so glad that I did, because it is extremely useful. So say you record something that doesn't have a high volume level, and you pop it into Premiere and it's not really that, that loud, and you need it louder. Now the conventional way to do it would just be, you know, dragging out the volume tab down here, but say that's not enough. I mean, there's gotta be a way to make this louder. There is. All you gotta do is just right click it, and go to audio gain. Now you can actually add gain to your clip. I'm gonna add this by five decibels, and it's going to increase the level of audio on your clip right there and you can do this as many times as you need to raise the threshold of your volume without you know distorting it too much so number 10 is using nesting to organize your timeline now you've probably seen something like this before it's called a graphic stack it happens whenever you got different parts of a graphic popping in at different intervals uh, during a clip now we got seven layers of video here and if you're trying to organize your timeline it could take up a lot of space. So with these clips here, we can actually just minimize them down to just one video layer by highlighting them all, and we're gonna right click and go to nest. Now that nest, we can create this as graphics one. Oh, don't know how to spell graphics. And it's gonna automatically condense them into one video layer. This is called a nest. So here we can double click it and it's gonna pop up its own little sequence. Um, so if you need to edit it at all, um, you can go into there. But in your normal timeline, it's going to be just one single video layer that has been taken up by it, no longer seven, which is extremely helpful and it clears your mind and you're not staring at a giant abyss of clips that you don't know goes to what. Number 11 is going to be utilizing your curves in Lumetri Color. So when you start working with log footage, it can be kind of intimidating because it obviously has that little gray wash over it whenever you import it into Premiere. And unless you just slap a LUT on it, uh, sometimes a lot of people don't know what further customization they can do with their clip. So obviously you wanna add some contrast to this clip. So, I mean, you can always use your contrast slider, but you only have such a limited range of motion when it comes to that. So I personally like using the curves button. So you can create something up here on your low lights and your highlights. Then you can do something called crushing down your darks of your video. So this node right here is going to just kind of make this a little bit darker. And then up here, this top node, we're going to add some contrast to it. Now you have a lot more power to fine tune the contrast of this clip compared to the contrast slider. Um, so get used to the curves, play around with it, see what it does to your clip, but say it's time to add your LUT. So let's go into number 12. If you look up most tutorials on LUTs, it's gonna tell you to import it through the input LUT section right here. So, you know, typically go through here, add your LUT, and it's going to pop in right here. But the problem with this here is that you can't adjust the intensity of that LUT. Um, it's only just all or nothing. And let me show you what you can do to adjust the intensity of that LUT. So you're not gonna use the input LUT button. You're actually gonna go to creative and go to the look tab. 
browse here and you're gonna select that same LUT that you use, press OK, and you can actually just adjust the intensity right here of that LUT. So say you wanna make it double time, make it really intense or make it, you know, 80 something percent. Um, you can do that with the creative tab. All right, so say you've color graded one of your clips and you wanna paste it along all your timeline on your similar clips that are there. Um, instead of creating an adjustment layer and putting the LUT there, uh, it's a pretty intensive color grade and you just want to kind of batch put it on the rest and then kind of adjust the other clips after you've put the stuff on there. You get what I mean. Take that color grade from that clip by pressing Command C and that's gonna copy all the attributes from that clip. Then you're gonna highlight all your other clips that are in log currently and you're gonna press Command Option V and up pops the Paste Attributes tab. Um, so here you can select other types of attributes you want to add to your clip, such as the motion or timer mapping of that one clip. But right now we just want the Lumetri color taken away from that and put onto the other. So we're going to click OK. And now that Lumetri color has been transferred over to the other clips and it is ready to go. So one of our last things that we're going to learn is talking about masking in Premiere. Maybe you're trying to up the brightness of one section of your video and not the others. This is where masks can come in and proves really, really reliable sometimes whenever you're in a pinch. So in Premiere, you have your mask you're probably familiar with, which is your opacity mask, which you can use to create shapes and that shape will, you know, delete the rest over your timeline and you can use that to um, drag out stuff from an original clip. But we're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about how you can use masks with effects. So say we have Lumetri color and we want to just brighten up my face and not brighten up the entire clip. So we're just going to grab our pen tool and just draw a quick little mask around my face. And now that there's going to be a mask within Lumetri that I can use to brighten up that just one area of the clip and you don't have to affect the entire region. So you can actually also track this within Premiere using this play button. Um, pressing play, uh, that mask will automatically track to the place it's fixed to in Premiere without having to go to After Effects. And this works for all effects, so even if you have something like a blur, you can draw a circle around your face, blur that out, and then track that in Premiere as well. Even if they move and they try to get away, their identity is still safe from the mobsters that are trying to kill them. All right, on to our last and final trick, number 15. We're gonna be talking about time remapping. And I know I did a whole video on this once, uh, which I can link right there. But I thought it'd be nice to include this uh, if you haven't seen that video. So to easily manipulate the speed of this clip, you're just gonna right click it and go down to the bottom right and go to show clip keyframes, and then time remapping and speed. Right here, it's gonna pop up a little line. Uh, so I'm gonna press P and create a new pen point. Uh, and from here, you can raise up the speed to your desired amount. So I'm gonna do it at 286% fast. See, right whenever it gets near the tower, it's gonna to slow down a little bit. Uh, to smooth this out even more right here, you can actually grab this little arm. You can adjust the curve of it to make it slower, faster, you know, uh, make it slide in. But for more information on time remapping, make sure to go to the different video. I go into it way more in depth, so. All right, guys, that completes our 15 things that I wish I learned as a beginner in Premiere. Um, hopefully these tricks and tips helped you out. Um, I really wish I knew them whenever I was starting out Premiere or even like, you know, being an intermediate level editor in Premiere. Um, it's just things that make you more comfortable in the software whenever you're editing. Um, it always helps to feel comfortable and confident while you're editing. Once you're confident and secure in your abilities, which I know you are, you are the champion of editing. I believe in you. Consider this your pep talk. You're a good editor, and these little tricks are gonna help you edit your next project in a flash. If they don't, you can come to my office and fight me. Just just kidding, don't do that. Um, you'll probably win. Make sure to like, sub, share, all that jazz, and we'll see you next time.